Good morning. God is good. All the time. Happy Palm Sunday. Today we celebrate Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. So, for you guys watching on live stream, happy Palm Sunday to you too. This is Thermont United Church. I'm Pastor Ken and I'm glad you joined us. If you're new to the church, we're a Bible based church, mission minded church. 10% of the money that comes in goes back out to missions. If you'd like to support this ministry, our address is 13880 Long Road, Thermont, Maryland, 21788. And check out our, our website as well. Does anybody have an announcement this morning? Are there any announcements? Well, I have a very important one. Thursday, we're going to have Chosen People Ministries here. And we got Rabbi Dennis Cart a Messianic rabbi coming. So I hope that you come and join us Thursday. You know, Thursday at 7 o'clock here. Uh, the service will also be live streamed as well. So tell your friends, your family members, that this is going to be an awesome presentation. He's going to lead us through the Seder meal that our Jewish brothers and sisters celebrate and show us how that interconnects with our Lord's Supper and our, our, our faith as Christians. So it's something that you don't want to miss. So I hope you got Thursday at 7 o'clock on your calendar. Any other announcements? I have one. Oh, right, Julie. Thank you, Julie. So those who are watching online, she just told us that starting May the 2nd, our Sunday school grades will resume. So we're going to start back up our Sunday school classes. And we have Vacation Bible School scheduled for the last week in July. Okay, the last week in July. Excellent. Thank you, Julie. Yes. Congrats. I hear he did an awesome job, too. That's what they tell me. <laughs> he did. <laughs> he did. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Gabe did an awesome job. Congratulations. Other joints. Maddie. So today's your last competition for cheer. Okay, awesome. And where do you go? Okay. Well. Okay, I see. I see. It's virtual. Okay. Well, good luck to you. Do your best, and you know that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, cheerleading is. It takes a lot of gymnastic ability. It's not like in the old days. You know, where it just you know waving around pom-poms. I knew they do backflips, somersaults, you know, uh, cartwheels and all that kind of stuff. And I've seen Maddie do these things. So uh, you have to be very athletic. Any other joys? Praise God for that. I know it got pretty scary when she got that infection. So that's awesome news. Oh, okay. Well, wonderful. So we're happy to hear Debbie. Debbie is back home. That's awesome. Thank you, Shirley. Any other joys? No. No? Okay. I guess we can move on. Well, hi, Jenna. We've been praying for you. Glad to see you. Okay, well, that's, that's awesome. Other joys? 
Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Amen to that. And out of joys or prayer concerns, anybody have a, maybe a concern as well? Actually, I have a couple concerns. Um, Joe Riffle is uh, at a rehab center in uh, Glade Valley. Glade Valley Rehab Center. Joe fell and broke his hip. So he's going to be at Glade Valley for a while. Also, um, but she's recovering. Connie uh, Freem, Freem, Connie broke her hip too, but she's on her way to recovery. And also, please keep uh, Glenn Ricker in your prayers. He's, he's, I went to see him for um, a good while. and Mentally, he's doing fine. He, he's he's, he's you know, he's got an upbeat spirit, that's for sure, and his faith is as strong as ever. But physically, he's extremely weak. So please keep Glenn in your prayers. Any others? Well, if not, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Today we celebrate Palm Sunday and we celebrate Jesus' triumphal visit into Jerusalem, Lord. Help us to celebrate this morning as we celebrate him as not just for a day, but as our Lord and Savior. Lord, we're grateful for the joys that we've heard, Lord. Uh, we pray that you'll be with um, Maddie as, as she does her competition day to help her do her, her very best and good luck for the team, Lord. We thank you for that. Lord, we ask your prayers for families that are visiting. I've heard people are going to, some people are receiving friends and family for Easter. Some people are going to family members, other family members for Easter. We pray for your traveling mercies for all those who travel during this time. And we pray for a, a joyous and, and safe Easter, Easter visit with friends and family. Lord, we lift up this morning our prayer concerns to you. For Joe Riffle, who fell and broke his hip, we ask that your Holy Spirit provide physical healing, as well as Connie Freen, who's recovering from a broken hip. We also lift up to you John Stoudemire. John Stoudemire, uh, his left eye, he's, he's lost sight, and they're, they're trying to resolve the issue, and we pray that he'll re get his sight back in his left eye, Lord. So we lift up John uh, Stoudemire for physical healing this morning. Lord, we also lift up prayers for Glenn Ricker and his wife, uh, Mary Ethel. Uh, Glenn is home now, um, but he's extremely weak, and we ask that your Holy Spirit will grant his body strength to recover and, and to heal. Heal from the infection, heal from the surgery, and Lord, we ask that, that he may receive healing. We lift up Angie Forrest, who is continuing to battle this, this situation that seems to never end with her digestive issues. We ask, Lord, that for healing there as well. Lord, we lift up these and other concerns that are in our hearts for those that need healing, whether it's physical or mental or spiritual or emotional. We lift up to you at this time. We lift up to you in a moment of silence. Lord, we thank you for hearing our prayers. And we pray in the name of Jesus. He taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom in the power, in the glory forever. Amen.
See, we have a new praise team member this morning. Uh, uh, she's a real. <laughs> so, good morning. Good morning. So, one of my favorite passages of Scripture is in uh, regarding the Palm Sunday. It's in Luke. And of course, Jesus is, they put him on a colt, and he's coming into the city and it says, and they brought the colt to Jesus and put their cloaks on it, and then they put Jesus on. And as they went along, people spread their, their cloaks on the road. Can you imagine? So somebody really, like maybe the, the president or somebody's coming in, and you realize that they're, they're walking through an area and actually throwing your coats on the floor so that they could cost, walk across them. And when he came near to the place where the road goes down to the Mount of Olives, the whole crowd of disciples began joyfully to praise God in loud voices for all the miracles they had seen. They said, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory on the highest. <clears throat> glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, I mean, what do you think? They, they were like, what are they doing? They can, you know, he, this, this is a man. And they said, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. And he, I tell you, he replied, even if they kept quiet, the stones would cry out. Isn't that just a cool thing? He says, even if the people didn't. Because we're made to worship. That's what, that's what God has called us to do. So um, let's, uh, let's, let's worship in this. the 
that God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna, come in your way among us, welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Song 
Thank you, Jesus, for your love for us and for your salvation. Amen. Hey, Jamie. So what is today? Anybody know? It is. It's Palm Sunday. Do you know what a palm is? I've got one here on my hand. That's called a palm. But guess what? So is this, too, a palm tree. These are palms from my house. I had a palm tree that I don't think got enough water. So this one's not looking too good. But this is also a palm branch from a much bigger palm tree. That's also a palm. We, on Palm Sunday, we take a look at a scripture where it says people threw palms in the street as a way of saying welcome to Jesus as he drove, rode into town. Now the thing is, when he was riding into town, it was like he was playing a joke on the disciples. He told the disciples he was going to be a king. They knew that. And they figured he was going to be this big and mighty king who was going to come in and, like, get rid of the Romans. And he was going to ride on in on a big old horse and just show everybody how important he was. Guess what? He rode in on a donkey. <sighs> You're right. He rode in on a donkey. It was a joke. The disciples just couldn't figure it out. You think they laughed? Hmm. Do you like to laugh? You don't. Are you serious? You really don't like to laugh. Maddie, you like to laugh? Yeah, she does. Pastor Ken, you like to laugh? Yeah? How about Shirley? You like to laugh? Shirley likes to laugh. Okay, I don't know. Okay, what about it? You guys like to laugh back there, Kyle? Yeah? He does. Okay, great. They like to laugh. I'm hearing lots of laughters. All right, let's practice. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Ha, ho, 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 ho. <laughs> hey, 
I think they can do it. What do you think? Are you ready? Ha, 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 hallelujah. Ho, 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 Hosanna. He, 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 he saved me, and I've got the joy of the Lord. Well, Hosanna is one of those words we hear a lot of on Palm Sunday. We just sang a song that had lots of Hosannas in it. Hosanna is a word that means something that's important for us to understand about this whole day. This day that we celebrate with palms and talking about a colt instead of a horse. Do you know what Hosanna means? It means he saves. The one who saves. Hosanna's the one who saves, and that's what the people were saying when they saw Jesus, because they recognized him as the kind of king who was going to do that for them. Let's try the song again, okay? Get your laughing ready. Ha, 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 hallelujah. Ho, 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 hosanna. He, 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 he saved me, and I've got the joy of the Lord. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you for giving us joy in our hearts. Thank you that sometimes you do play jokes on us, that things aren't the way we think they're going to be, but your way is so much better. Thank you for coming as a king who saves us. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Nancy. So, we're going to look at Jesus' entry in Jerusalem. I'm going to use Mark's version. So, I'd like you to turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11, verse 1 through 11. So, those watching on live stream, grab your Bible and turn to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 11. As they approached Jerusalem and Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and just as you enter it, you will find a colt tied there, which no one has ever ridden. Untie it, bring it here. If anyone asks you why you are doing this, say, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here shortly. They went and found the colt outside in the street, tied to doorway. As they untied it, some people standing there asked, What are you doing untying that colt? They answered as Jesus told them to. And the people let them go. When they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks over it, he sat on it. Many people spread their coats on the road, while others spread branches that they had cut in the fields. Those who went ahead and those who followed shouted, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Jesus entered Jerusalem and went to the temple courts. He looked around at everything but since it was getting late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus' triumphal ministry. It was a celebration then, a celebration of their king coming to Jerusalem. Help it be a celebration for us too. But for us, just not just today, but for eternity. And Lord, I pray that the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, neither through me or in spite of me. May your words speak to your people. In the name of the risen Christ, I pray. Amen. Jesus was coming. The folks were excited. That caring, that compassionate man, that prophet, who preached messages of hope to the poor, who reached out his hand and healed people and gave life. He was coming. 
And Jesus instructed two of his disciples to go to a nearby village and find a colt that had never been ridden. You know, that was fulfillment of Scripture. If we read the book of Zechariah, if we turn to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, Zechariah 9 says, Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout, daughter Jerusalem. Your king is coming to you, righteous and victorious, lowly and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the fold of a donkey. So that fulfilled that scripture passage. So Jesus tells them to untie it and bring it to him. And if anybody asks why they're taking the cult, simply say, the Lord needs it and we'll bring it back. So the disciples set out in search of the cult. And to their surprise and their joy, they find the cult just as Jesus told them they would. And sure enough, someone saw them taking the colt and said, what are you doing untying that colt? The disciples responded, Jesus instructed them, the Lord needs it, and they were allowed to take it without any further questioning. And no sooner had the two disciples returned with the colt than a gigantic crowd appeared. And the crowd was in mood for a party. They were in mood for a celebration. There was a lot of excitement in the air. Some spread their coats on the road. Others caught, cut palm branches and placed them on the road. There was a lot of singing, a lot of shouting. The people were ready for a change. They wanted somebody to lead them to a better life, and they had high hopes. But the problem was these high hopes that they had were short-sighted. They could not see what God was planning. When the people saw Jesus riding into Jerusalem on that cult, they immediately thought that he would smash and shatter and break up the established order. They thought it was going to be a showdown between Jesus and the Romans. That's what they wanted. That's what they were hoping for. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They were geared up and they were ready. But what they couldn't see in front of them was a very contradiction of what they hoped for because Jesus was riding a donkey which is a symbol of peace, not a horse, which is a symbol of war. And behind him, there were the 12 disciples. And that they were behind the 12 disciples, there were common people who had healed and set free. The people were so preoccupied with the notion of, of freedom from the Romans, the notion of political and economic power, that they were blind to see what was happening right in front of their eyes. They could not see what God was doing right in front of them. And that's a reminder to us that sometimes we don't see what God is doing right in front of us because we have preconceived notions of what God should be doing. We don't see what God is doing. When that first Palm Sunday, the people were expecting a conquering king and their hopes were high, but they were short-sighted because God had a different plan in mind. The people that welcomed Jesus to Jerusalem did not realize that Jesus was inviting them to do something different. He was inviting them to be involved in a new movement, to do a new thing. For Jesus was starting at the bottom. He was starting at the bottom to build a new community, a new community made up of men and of women that would grow person by person by person. That would be God's community the church of Jesus Christ. Today, Jesus is leading his new community, the church of Jesus Christ, to the second coming, when he will come again, when everybody will live under his lordship. We're studying the writings of St. Paul on Wednesday night in Bible study. St. Paul has a, talks a lot about Jesus coming into the world and what that meant and, and what his purpose was and I like St. Paul when he says in Philippians that although he was in the form of God, he not, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped. So he emptied himself and took on the form of a servant, born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, 
even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him up and stowed upon him the name which is above every name, that in the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. St. Paul was getting us to image Jesus as something greater than we could ever imagine. There are four simple phrases that help us to explain what St. Paul is talking about. First, St. Paul is telling us that he had it all, that he was one with God in heaven. He didn't have just the applause of the crowd on Palm Sunday. No, no, he had it all. But he gave it all up for us, and that's the good news for us, that he died for us. I like the painting of the crucifixion. Have any of you seen the painting of the crucifixion by Rembrandt? A very famous painting uh, by Rembrandt called the crucifixion. And when Rembrandt painted the crucifixion, believe it or not, he painted his own face in the angry mob. He painted his own face in the rob because Rembrandt knew that it was for his sins that Christ died and was nailed to the cross. For he had it all, he gave it all, and that's what we celebrate today. But if we read our Bible from the, from the cheers of the crowd, the scene quickly shifts to the crucifixion. And by his death, he changed it all. His death changed our relationship with God. We no longer have to do animal sacrifices and go through a, a high priest. He changed our relationship with God, and he changed our relationship with others. We are now brothers and sisters. We don't have to be just a certain race of Jews. It's the Jews and Gentiles and everyone who believes. He changed our relationship with God and with, the, uh, with each other, and he offers it to us, to you and to me. And we share. We share in his victory. We share in his victory that Christ gives us and the eternal life. For Christ and Christ alone gives us eternal life. And that should be a reminder. Christ and Christ alone gives us eternal life. Religion can never answer our human problems in life. Religion is inadequate because Christ alone can answer our, our problems. Christ alone understands the human situation. Christ alone can forgive us of our sins. Christ alone can eliminate the guilt that we have for past sins. Christ alone assures us of salvation and reminds us that we are his children, that we are children of God. Christ alone can give us joy and peace and love in our hearts. And Christ alone, of course, gives us eternal life. So he had it all, he gave it all, and he changed it all, and he offers it all to us. So we have a friend. We have a friend, the Son of God who we can depend upon. But that friend that we have sits at the right hand of the Father. And that same friend sits with us when we are sick in bed and walks with us through the journey of life and reminds us to enter into his joy of salvation. Palm Sunday is indeed a celebration. It's a big celebration of the Messiah. It's a celebration of Christ who was crucified. The celebration of Christ who walked with us day to day. I like what Jeff reminded us this morning that in St. Luke, St. Luke tells an interesting part of this scene. He says that there were some Pharisees in the crowd that told Jesus to command the people to be quiet. Be quiet. They were just making too much noise. And Jesus responded, if they keep quiet, the rocks and stones themselves will start to sing. Rulers, great and small, have walked across the stage of history, of human history. But all the other rulers were rulers for a day. In Christ, we have a ruler for eternity, who will live forever and ever. How does that affect us today? What does that mean for us today? Well, it should change the way we live. You know, people hold up whatever values they have. 
And some people, um, the most important thing in their life, for many people, their value, what they place as important in life is, is finances, it's money. But Jesus reminds us that the love of money is the root of all evil. Other people, well, they want power, they want prestige in life, and they hold that up as the, the thing that they strive for the most. Well, God reminds us that power tends to corrupt, and absolute power corrupts absolutely. We all tend to be fickle. Human beings in general were fickle people. And the crowd that day was very fickle. They shouted, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But that same crowd, a few days later, will shout, Crucify him, crucify him. We can't, we can't judge the crowd because we tend to be fickle too. We tend to be fickle when we realize that that celebration leads to Calvary. It leads to Calvary. And sometimes it, it leads to harm. Sometimes it leads to suffering. Sometimes following Jesus can, can be difficult for us. It can lead to pain sometimes. Sometimes we get the idea that if we follow Jesus, Jesus is going to put a, around us an invisible force field an invisible protective shield that protects us from all harm, from all danger, from anything bad that will happen. But that's not the case. That's not the gospel. And I've, I've seen people that have believed that, and unfortunately, when something tragic happens in their life, maybe to them, or a loved one passes away, or a disease, they become shocked. They go into despair. And some of them completely lose their faith. And it's sad. Some of them never recover from it. So we have to keep in mind where that celebration leads. We can't stop at Palm Sunday. No, no, we can't stop at Palm Sunday. If you stop at Palm Sunday, you may think that was Jesus' greatest hour. That Jesus ended on a high note that the people understood his message, they understood his message, and they kept following him. If you stopped on Palm Sunday, you might believe that. It's easy to be part of the Palm Sunday crowd because we all like winners. We all like to be on the winning team. It's hard to follow a cause when it leads to sacrifice, when it places demand upon us. Those who walk with Jesus only on Palm Sunday, when things went well, when everybody was happy, they really missed out on the true victory. To really understand who Jesus was and what it's about and what he can do for you and for me, we have to follow Jesus beyond Palm Sunday. For Palm Sunday marks the first day of that last week. It marks the beginning the beginning of Jesus' last week on earth. And if you look at the Bible, much of the gospel revolves around that last week of Jesus' ministry on earth. Take Matthew, for example. One-third of Matthew's gospel takes place after Palm Sunday. Take the gospel of Mark. One-third of Mark's gospel takes place after Palm Sunday. I'll take the Gospel of Luke. Luke's Gospel, one-fourth of his Gospel, takes place after Palm Sunday. Well, now, let's look at the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, Palm Sunday, is on chapter 12. But the Gospel of John does not end to chapter 21. One half of John's Gospel is devoted to what happens after Palm Sunday. So if we want to understand the gospel, if we want to understand what Jesus was about, we have to go beyond Palm Sunday. We have to move to Thursday. Thursday, when Jesus went to the upper room and sat down with his disciples to share in the Last Supper. And by the way, I'd like to say again that Thursday we're going to have that uh, Messianic 
rabbi here uh, Thursday at 7 o'clock. And those of you who are watching live stream, it will be live stream, so you'll get to see it as well, Thursday at 7. But we have to move to that Last Supper. And then Thursday night, Thursday evening, Jesus went into the Garden of Gethsemane, and he prayed. My Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as thou wilt. We must move past Palm Sunday to follow Jesus even to Good Friday. To Good Friday when he carried that old rugged cross up Calvary's hill. So the real victory was not seen by the Palm Sunday crowd. The real victory was seen by the faithful who walked with Jesus beyond Palm Sunday all the way to Calvary. On this Palm Sunday, there's going to be millions and millions of Christians around the world waving palm branches, shouting, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But the question remains, do we celebrate Jesus just for a day? As the crowd did that very first Palm Sunday? Or are we willing to walk with Jesus to Calvary? I hope we walk. Amen. We are a moment, you are forever, Lord of the ages, God before time. We are a vapor, you are eternal, love everlasting, reigning on high.
those of you watching on live stream, I'd like you to uh, go to your kitchen, uh, get some bread and some juice, and join us as we celebrate Holy Communion together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we remember Jesus taking his disciples to the upper room on Holy Thursday. And he took bread and gave thanks. And he gave the bread to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, broken for you. Eat of it as often as you will, remember to me. And supper is over, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave the cup to the disciples and said, Take, drink, all of you, this is my blood, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Drink of it as often as you will, and remember to me. So when we eat the bread and drink of the cup, we remember your life, death, and resurrection, and we look forward to your coming again. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with Christians around the world as we gather together at your heavenly banquet. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Taking the bread, the body of Christ broken for you, take, eat, and be thankful. When taking the juice, the blood of Christ shed for you, take, drink, and be thankful. Lord, we thank you for the bread and the cup we've just received. May they be for us the body and blood of Christ to renew our faith. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. song is called The Stand, so I guess you better stand. (laughs) (laughs) You stood stood before creation, eternity in your hand. You spoke the earth into motion my soul now to stand you stood before my failure and carried the cross for my shame my sin weighed upon your shoulders my soul now to stand What can I say? And what can I do? But offer this heart, O oh God, completely to you. What can I do? But offer this heart, O God, completely to you. What can I say? What can I do? Heart 
sign of dependent If all for the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul Lord to you surrender if all I am is yours I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in long for the one who gave it all I'll stand my soul Lord to you surrender if all I am is yours I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in love of the one who gave it all. I'll stand, my soul, Lord, do you surrender all I am is yours. I'll stand with arms high and heart abandoned in love of the one who gave it all. I'll stand. My soul, Lord, do you surrender all I am is yours. All I am is yours. All I am is yours. All I am is Surrender all I am is yours. 